Okay, today we're going to talk about the Z-transform, which is something that we'll be uh, getting to uh, as we analyze uh, uh, phase lock loops a little bit later on when we realize that they're really uh, discrete time systems. So to form the Z-transform, we start from the Laplace transform, and we note that the Laplace transform, the definition, of course, is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Okay, we're going to assume that our function f of t is some kind of discrete sampled wave. So what we're really noting uh, then is that ft is sampled at a sampling frequency of fs, which is equal to 1 divided by ts, the sampling period. And if we note this, then we can uh, simply say that our function f star of t here is equal to the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity of f at discrete sampling points n times t subsample d t minus n times t subsample. Okay, now if we take the Laplace transform of our function f star of t, and note that this is really equal to f of z when z is equal to e to the s times t subsample. This gives us our general definition for the Laplace transform, which is the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity of f of n z to the minus n. Now, we'll note here that this is a bilateral Laplace transform, uh, and we uh, can also look at uh, the simpler case where we go uh, over the bounds from n equals 0 to infinity. Uh, this, of course, covers both bounds. Let's look at an example. Our example will be the function f of n is equal to u of n, which is a discrete time unit step function. Let's find the z-transform of this. So we set our function up just as we did before. We're replacing f of n with our function u of n times z to the minus n. And we note that u of n is simply 0 for all n less than 0 and 1 for all n greater than or equal to 0. So we can simply change the bounds of our summation and get rid of the unit step function. All right, well, when we do this, our f of z now becomes 1 plus 1 over z plus 1 over z squared plus 1 over z cubed, and so on. And we can simplify this to the following expression, 1 divided by 1 minus z inverse, or it's equal to z divided by z minus 1. All right, now let's look at a few general rules for Laplace transforms. So in general, we have a function that's in the time domain, and if we do a z transform on it, we get a function in the z domain. Of course, this time domain is a discrete sampled time domain. Uh, we can find a function that has some time delay in it, t minus n times t sub s, 
And if we want to account for that time delay, we simply need to multiply the Laplace transform of the original function by z to the minus n. And what we are really doing here is accounting for a delay of n samples. Finally, we have a unit delay. Our unit delay in the time domain looks like e to the minus j omega t sub s. And in the z domain is just simply z to the minus 1. OK, so let's look at the difference between continuous time uh, or continuous uh, versus discrete time. Uh, we have our Laplace transform for continuous time, uh, which goes between the time domain and the s domain. And then the z transform goes between the sample domain and the discrete domain, the z domain. Our unit step function in the, in the continuous time domain has a Laplace transform u of s, which is equal to 1 over s. Now this is well known to be an integral. Conversely, the discrete time uh, unit step we just found has a z transform that's equal to z divided by z minus 1. This is commonly known as an accumulator. Accumulators are discrete time integrators. So let's look at a few common types of accumulation. These will become more important as we look at phase lock loops. So we'll just keep them in mind. So remember, accumulation is a discrete integral. Okay, so the top one here is called a zero delay. accumulator. And of course, if we raise, if we add some uh, something in the numerator, uh, z to the minus one half, what we're really doing is adding a half delay, uh, as we saw up here. So this is called a half delay accumulator. Finally, we have a full delay accumulator. Now note that what's causing the delay is the uh, z raised to some power in the numerator, uh, and that is a tantamount to what we would call a discrete derivative. We look at a few of the common types of uh, transforms that we'll see in phase lock loops. So one that we might see would be an impulse function, d of n minus j. And this has a z transform of z to the minus j. We've already seen the unit step u sub n. And we know that this is equal to z over z minus 1 in the z domain. And we might have some unit step multiplied by the step. And of course, these are just a few examples from a table uh, that we might build, or you can find uh, many of these tables uh, on the internet. A few additional important properties of the Z-transform. Uh, one, they're additive, and that means that their function in the uh, discrete uh, sample domain, uh, if we uh, add two uh, functions in the discrete sample domain, their Z-transforms are also additive. Uh, if we multiply a function by a scalar, we simply multiply the function in the z domain by that same scalar. And of course, time convolution uh, in the sample domain is equal to multiplication in the z domain.
Okay, so we'll stop there for the day. Um, it, this is uh, something that we will come back to uh, a little bit later on when we start looking at charge pump based uh, phase lock loops.